This is section 7.3 on hyperbolas. Standard forms of equations for hyperbolas. We have x minus h squared over a squared, and then there should be a minus in here, minus y minus k squared over b squared equals 1. And when x is first, then the uh, hyperbola is going to go to the right and to the left. In other words, a horizontal hyperbola. When y is first, it's a very similar equation. When y is first, then the hyperbola goes in more of a vertical fashion. In other words, it opens up and down. The horizontal transverse axis means that uh, we have these vertices here. Here's a vertice, here's a vertice, and the transverse axis is in between those two vertices. And when x is first, we have a horizontal transverse axis. Uh, and when y is first on a hyperbola, then the transverse axis is in a vertical fashion. The center is hk, just like all of our conics. The distance from a vertice to the center, this little distance right here, that distance is a. The focal, uh, the, the focal points, the, the c is the distance from the center to a focal point. So from center to focal point, that's a distance of c center to vertice is A. The transverse axis is uh, the distance between the two vertices. The conjugate axis is, that's kind of hard to explain right now before we do an example, but when we make these hyperbolas we have this little, this rectangle, and the conjugate axis is from the center to we have this these helping points that really don't exist on the curve. We have asymptotes and the, the relationship between a, b, and c is c squared equals a squared plus b squared. And right here you see the two asymptotes that the curve follows. Graph the hyperbola given by that function. Identify the center, vertices, and the focal points. Well, first of all, the center for this one is 0, 0. So we plot 0, 0. And then we go right and left for uh, 7, uh, because that is under the x. So it means we're going to go right and left 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 to the right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 to the left. And then under the y, we have 81. So from the center, we're going to go up and down 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then we create this rectangle that goes through these four points that we created. And the reason we want this uh, rectangle is now we can draw the asymptotes. And the asymptotes go through the corners of the rectangle. So go there's the other asymptote. Because x is first, we're going to draw this hyperbola to the left and to the right. And we're going to follow these dotted lines. We're going to follow the asymptotes. We've identified the center. Let's identify the vertices. This is a vertice and that's a vertice. And the reason those are vertices and not these up here is because, like I said before, x is first. So the vertices are uh, plus or minus 7, 0. And we're supposed to find the focal points. c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So c squared is equal to a is actually under the x. a is always first on a hyperbola. So we have 49 plus 81. So c squared is equal to, let's see, 0, 1, 130. So c is plus or minus square root of 130. So the focal points now, if we plot those, we're going to have to get a calculator, take the square root of 130. Square root of 130 is 11.4. So we have 11.4 to the right, 11.4 to the left. Those are the focal points. We have plus or minus square root of 130, comma, 0 for focal points. Graph the hyperbola given by that equation. Identify the center, vertices, and focal points. We can get the center right away. Now remember, keep x with x. 2, negative 4. That's the center. Let's plot 2, negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 2, negative 4, right there. 
Now let's go up and down two from the center, up two and down two, and we'll go right and left three units. So right three and left three. And now we have to draw the rectangle. And when we draw the rectangle, we get the corners so we can draw our asymptotes. So there's the other asymptote. And now y is first, since y is first, this is going to be a vertical hyperbola. So the, the hyperbola here goes up and down. And what that tells me is this point and this point are the vertices. So here's your vertices. That's the point 2, negative 2. So vertices are 2, negative 2. And we have 2, negative 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Negative 6. So we have the center, the vertices. We need the focal point. C squared equals A squared plus B squared. So C squared equals 4 plus 9. C squared equals 13. So C equals plus or minus the square root of 13. Now uh, that, the, this uh, square root of 13 is, well, let's get square root of 13. That's 3.6. So 3.6 from the center up. 1, 2, 3.6 and 1, 2, 3.6 down. It's about right there. There's your focal points. Those points are going to be, they're all lined up with the x value of 2. They're all lined up with 2, but then we have, um, where's the center? The center is negative 4. So then negative 4 plus or minus the square root of 13. We went uh, up 3.6 and down 3.6. Graph the hyperbola given by, well, we have this function. We have a center of negative 1, 3. So where is negative 1, 3? Uh, looks like negative 1, 3 is either C or D. We can rule out A and B. And then we're going to go up and down 8 and right and left 7. And because Y is first, it's going up and down. Well, both are going up and down. So which one goes up and down 8? Here would be 4 and 8. Here would be 4 and 8 on C. This, is, this one, uh, the answer is letter C. Graph the hyperbola given by that function. Well, we have 4 times x squared plus 6x plus something. And then minus, we have y squared uh, minus 4y plus something equals 28 plus something and then minus something. Now notice when we factor out a negative 1, that becomes minus y squared and then minus 4y plus something inside here. But that's the trick right there. It's going to be a minus. That minus right there, because if I distributed that negative back through, that would, be go that would go back to the plus 4y. Well, 6 divided by 2 is 3. 3 squared is 9. But we've really added 36 to this side. So we'll add 36 here. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 squared is 4. And we've really minused 4 from the left side. So we have to do the same on the other side. We have 4 times x plus 3 squared minus y minus 2 squared is equal to 60. Well, this is a hyperbola, so we'll have to get this equal to 1. We'll divide everybody by 60. So divide by 60. We get x plus 3 squared over 15 minus y minus 2 squared over 60 is equal to 1. And we are supposed to graph this. Now, the center is negative 3, 2. So let's plot that. Negative 3, 2. And then we'll have to go right and left the square root of 15. Let's take the square root of 15. I got a calculator here. Square root of 15 is 3.87. Square root of 15 equals 3.87. So go right and left almost 4. 1, 2, 3.87. 1, 2, 3.87. And then we'll go up and down the square root of 60. Square root of 60 is 7.75, so almost 8. 7.8, let's call it. 
So up and down 7.8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7.8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Point eight, and we're going to draw the rectangle through all four of these points. That way we can draw the asymptotes. Here's the asymptotes. And since x is first in the equation, then this one is this hyperbola is going to go right and left. It's a horizontal hyperbola. Graph the hyperbola given by that equation. We have uh, 3 times x squared minus 10x plus something, and then minus y squared plus 4y plus something is equal to negative 119 plus something minus something. Uh, 10 divided by 2 is 5, squi 5 squared is 25, so we're really adding on 75 to the left side, so we'll add 75 to the right side. 4 divided by 2 is 2, 2 squared is 4, so we really minus 4. We have 3 times x minus 5 squared minus y plus 2 squared is equal to negative 48. Well, we need to divide by negative 48 so that we can get this equal to 1. So divide by negative 48, and we'll divide this one by negative 48. We have y plus 2 squared over 48 uh, minus x minus 5 squared over 16 is equal to 1. We have a center of 5, negative 2. Can we eliminate any of those with 5, negative 2? I can eliminate d. That's 5, positive 2. Uh, let's see, Can I, I can't really eliminate anything else. And then we need to go up and down the square root of 48. The square root of 48 is about 7, so we need to go up and down 7. Well, that eliminates C because this is not a right and a left hyperbola, it's up and down. And let's see, if we go, this is going by 5s, so this is down 2. Uh, this would be, that would only be up 5. This one is the one that's up 7, so letter B. Graph the conic, identify the center, vertices, and focal points. Let's take 9 out of the y's, so we have plus 4y plus something, and then we'll take a negative 4 out of the x's. We have x squared minus 6x plus something, and that's equal to 36 plus something minus something. 4 divided by 2 is 2, 2 squared is 4, so we need to add 36. And then 6 divided by 2 is 3, 3 squared is 9, and we need to minus 36, because we're going to take negative 4 times 9 to get what we actually did to the left side. We minus 36. We have 9 times y plus 2 squared minus 4 times x minus 3 squared is equal to 36. Well, now we need to... Two divide by 36, that's 936 is 1 fourth, and 4 over 36 is 1 ninth, and that's equal to 1. Our center is 3, negative 2. Let's plot 3, negative 2. 3, negative 2. We need the vertices. Well, we're going to go up and down two units because of the four under the y, and then right and left three units. One, two, three. One, two, three. There's the rectangle. We need the asymptotes. And because y is first, this one is going up and down. This hyperbola is a vertical hyperbola. Well, that makes these two points the vertices. We have 3, 0, and 3, negative 4. They ask for the focal points also. Well, c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. So c squared is equal to 4 plus 9. c squared is equal to 13. c is equal to plus or minus square root of 13. And the focal points, the vertices, and the center will all be lined up. So the focal points are at the x coordinate of 3 
And then if we look at the center, here's the center, uh, the focal points will be negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 13. Uh, because y is first, and those focal points would go up and down, affecting the y-coordinate of the center.